In this video, I will show you how to track embedded video players with Google Analytics and Google Tag Manager. Even though GA4 has a built-in video tracking feature, it supports only YouTube. And even then, it doesn't always work. Also, at the end of this video, I will share three additional power tips. So, let's dive in. Let's start with the most popular video player on the web, which is YouTube. There are several ways how you can track YouTube with Google Analytics 4. First of all, it has a built-in YouTube tracking feature. So this is obviously the first thing that you should try. In your Google Analytics 4 property, go to Admin, then Data Streams, select your website data stream, and here in the Enhanced Measurements section, you can click this icon to check if video engagement is enabled. If it is, then obviously you also need to have installed Google Analytics 4 on a website. In the case of this demo page, I have Google Tag Manager installed, and inside that container, I have a GA4 configuration tag, also known as Google Tag. So this will activate things such as page view tracking, but also it will track YouTube video players. At least it will try to do so. And in this video, when I'm talking about video player tracking, those videos must be embedded on your website. So now let's check if this is working. First of all, I will click preview, then I will enter the URL of the page where my embedded YouTube video player is, and then I will click connect. Once the preview mode is connected, I can click play, then I can click pause and see what is happening in the preview mode. And even though I don't have anything specifically configured in Google Tag Manager, Google Analytics is already capable of tracking video players. And in this case, only YouTube video players. So here I can see the events such as YouTube video. If I click on my Google Analytics for measurement ID, I can also see the requests that were sent to Google Analytics and one of them is video start. Now, if I go to Google Analytics and then in the admin, I go to the debug view, here I will also see the video start event. I can click it and here are the parameters that are tracked automatically by Google Analytics 4. For example, the video title, the video percent, and the event name contains the name of the action, which in this this case is start. If I watched 25% of the video, then the event name would be video underscore progress. But it is completely possible that maybe you have a YouTube video embedded and for some reason Google Analytics 4 cannot track it automatically. So let's take a look what can you do in that situation. So first of all, I will disable the built-in video tracking because I just want to pretend that it is not working. So I can do that by going to data streams in the admin panel, then I select website data stream, and then I will disable the video engagement tracking. And then I click save. So Google Tag Manager has built-in YouTube tracking features, but you have to enable them. To do that, go to your GTM container and then click triggers. Then select new, trigger configuration and YouTube video. Here you can select what kind of interactions do you want to track. In my case, I will be tracking start, complete, and then progress. And these are the thresholds when you want to track the progress. For example, if the visitor watches 25% of the video and you want to track that, then you should enter 25. If you want to enter multiple values, then you can enter them separated with comma. Usually I enter these kind of percentages, but just to quickly troubleshoot the implementation, I will also add the 5% mark. Then very often you will need to enable this checkbox and then let's keep all the other settings as they are. So let's save this trigger and click save. Then click preview. This will refresh the preview mode. Remember, we have disabled the built-in YouTube video tracking in Google Analytics 4. So if we start seeing some YouTube events right here, they will be coming directly from Google Tag Manager. So I will go to the website and then I will click play. Then I will wait for a while. After that 5% mark has been passed, then I will go to my preview mode and here I see two YouTube video events. I can click the first one, then I can expand it and I can see what kind of information did it fetch. I see things such as video title, video status, then we also have video percent. If I go to the next event here, we will see progress. We will see that it was 5% mark. So we have plenty of information right here. However, if we want to send this to Google Analytics 4, we must have these parameters as variables. So in the variable section, if I scroll down, I will see a bunch of video variables. This is available because I have already enabled them in this container. But in your case, maybe you don't see those variables. So in that case, you should go to Google Tag Manager, variables, 
then click configure and then here you should enable all video variables right here after that refresh the preview mode and then interact with the player again and eventually you should start seeing those variables right here so once you start seeing the video events and once you have the variables here, the next step is to send the data to Google Analytics 4. We can do that with the GA4 event tag. Let's go to Google Tag Manager, then go to Tags, New, Tag Configuration, and then Google Analytics. Here you should select GA4 event. Then let's enter the measurement ID. So you can get that, for example, from the web stream settings. You can just copy this and then paste it right here. Then the event name. You can come up with your own events, but it is recommended to follow the naming convention of Google Analytics 4. And video events with their recommended parameters are already mentioned in the documentation. Below this video, I will post a link to a documentation of enhanced event measurement. If you scroll down and keep looking for video events, you will see the recommended event names and their parameters. So first let's start with the event names. All of them start with video underscore and then it can be start, progress or complete. Luckily, our variables in the Google Tag Manager, actually one of them is called video status and its values can be progress or start or complete. So here's how we can configure the event name. As I've said, all event names start with video underscore, and then here we can insert the variable that will return the rest, which is start, progress, or complete. So I can just click the button to insert the variable, and then I will set the video status variable right here. Now the parameters. We have video current time, duration, percent. So let's insert all of them in the tag. Let's copy the first one and then go to event parameters, add parameter, and then insert the first parameter. Then I will add one more and then do the same thing for video duration. And right now I will pause the video and enter the remaining parameters myself. All right, I'm back and all of the parameters are inserted. Now I have to insert their values. And in this case, their values can be fetched from these variables. So in each parameter, I will have to insert a particular variable. I can do that by clicking here. So first I will work with the video current time. So I will click this button and then enter video current time. Then video duration, video percent, video provider, then title and finally URL. Then scroll down and click anywhere on the triggering section. And here we should select the YouTube trigger that we created previously in this video. So when Google Tag Manager catches any YouTube video interaction, this trigger will be activated and then this tag will be fired. It will send the event name and some additional information about that particular interaction. Let's name this tag and then click Save. Let's test if this is working. Click Preview. And then I will go to the website to click Play. I will wait here for several moments until I reach that 5% threshold. Then I click Pause. And in the preview mode, I see two events. The first one is YouTube video, and this one is related to the start of the video. And then the second one is related to the progress. Now I should go to the debug view of Google Analytics 4. I can do that by going to Admin and then Debug View. And here I see the video start. I can click it and here is the data that was tracked. For example, video duration, video title and so on. I can also click on video progress. And here we see a bunch of parameters as well. Even though Google Analytics documentation mentions these parameters as recommended ones, right now when I'm recording this video, not all of them are available in the interface of G4 as dimensions. Let me show you. If I go to Google Analytics, then Explore, then I select Blank Exploration, and here I click plus in the Dimensions section. Once I enter Video, I will see Video Provider, Video Title, and then Video URL. Some parameters are missing, for example, Video Percent, and personally I would like to see that dimension in the report. So if you do this kind of check and you see that some parameters are missing, you can register them as custom event scoped dimensions. In my case, I will create one which is video percent because it's not available here, but I am sending it right here. If you want, you can also create custom dimensions for video duration and video current time. So let's go to Google Analytics then admin and then keep looking for custom definitions. In the custom dimension section, click create custom dimension and then here you should enter video percent 
its scope should be event and then event parameter name should be video underscore percent exactly as it is mentioned right here in the settings of your event tag. So once you have entered this, click save, then you will need to publish your Google Tag Manager container. So you should click submit and then complete all the steps. This means that your setup will go live on your website and Google Analytics will start tracking embedded video interactions. And then you will need to wait between 24 and 48 hours to start seeing that data in your reports. If you want to learn how to build various reports in Google Analytics 4, then take a look at my GA4 course. I will post a link to it below the video. In this particular tutorial, we are focusing more on the setup and how to collect data. So that was the process of how you can track embedded YouTube video players on your website. But what about other players? For example, Vimeo, which is also quite popular. Here I have one more demo page. This time it contains an embedded Vimeo player and YouTube listeners or YouTube features in Google Analytics 4, they cannot track Vimeo players. So you will need to implement a custom solution. Below this video, you will find a link to my blog post about Vimeo player tracking. So click that link and then keep looking for a code in the auto event listener section. There are more instructions here if you want to have a more optimal setup, but just to keep things a bit simpler, we we will skip the first step and then we will go directly to the listener part. So in this section, copy the entire code. It's quite a long one. And after you copy it, go to Google Tag Manager, then Tags, then click New, Tag Configuration, Custom HTML Tag, and then paste the code. Then in the triggering, click Anywhere. And here you should select either DOM Ready or Window Loaded. Personally, I prefer Window Loaded but as you can see, neither of those is available in this list. So we will need to create a custom trigger. So click plus, then trigger configuration and select window loaded. Then let's name this trigger window loaded and click save. The trigger will be automatically added to the tag. Now let's name this tag and then click save. Let's test if this listener is working. So click preview then it will refresh the page. But if you haven't enabled the preview mode before, then you will need to enter the URL of the page where you have the Vimeo player embedded. So once the preview mode is connected, click play. Then I will click pause. I can also maybe skip to, I don't know, maybe here or maybe here and then click play. And here we will see a bunch of video events. So this listener is different from the YouTube tracking. Therefore, it's natural that the data it can provide can also be different. So if I click the first video event and I expand it, I will see the name of the event. I can also see the video action, video URL, video percent and video title. The YouTube video tracking had more parameters, but in my opinion, these are the most essentials. So they are still enough. Then this particular listener can also push the pause events, but on the web, you might find other variations of this Vimeo listener and that kind of listener might not push the pause events. So it's up to you if you want to use that or not. And also one of the events is related to video progress. So if we want to use this kind of information, we will need to create data layer variables because if I select the video event here, I go to variables, you will see that all video variables are undefined because they are coded in a way to recognize other parameter names and video action is not automatically recognized by Google Tag Manager built in variables. So we will need to create data layer variables. Let's start with a video action. I will copy it. Then I will go to Google Tag Manager, variables, then click new in the user defined variables, variable configuration and data layer variable. Let's enter the parameter name and then name the variable. Click save. And then repeat the same process for all other parameters, video URL, video percent and video title. I will now pause the video and create those variables. All right, I'm back and the variables are created. Now we are going to create a trigger because we are going to fire a GA4 event tag when this event happens in the preview mode or in the data layer. The event name is video, therefore it's exactly what we are going to use in the trigger. So copy this, then go to Google Tag Manager, Triggers, New, Trigger Configuration, and then select Custom Event. Here, enter the name of the event. In our case, that's video. And then let's name the trigger like this. Click Save. Finally, let's go to Tags and create an event tag 
which is going to send the Vimeo event to Google Analytics for. We could create it from scratch, but we already have this tag, so we can just copy it. I will click on the YouTube video tag, then three dots, copy, and then we can rename this to, let's say, Vimeo. And then let's edit the parameters. So the event name still can be, let's say, video underscore start or video underscore progress, but the variable is different, which contains the value. In our case, it's video underscore action. So I can edit this, remove the built-in variable, and instead of it, I will enter the video action. Then we have the video current time, but we don't have it here. Therefore, I will just remove this row. Then video duration is also unavailable here. So I will remove it as well. Then we have video percent. Here we also have the video percent. So I will replace this variable with the data layer variable, which is this one, then video provider. Here we don't have it, but this event will fire only on Vimeo interactions. Therefore, we can just enter Vimeo like that. Then video title, we have it here. So I will remove this and then I will insert the video title variable and finally video URL, which is this one. In the triggering section, let's click the pencil, remove the YouTube trigger and insert our custom trigger. Then save and let's test if everything is working properly. Click preview. This will refresh the preview mode. Then let's interact with the player. I clicked play, then I will click pause. And here I see two events. I can click the first one and I see the event tag. This is the data that was sent. I can switch to values and see the actual values. Then the same happened on the next video event. Now I can go to the debug view and check if that event, in my case, two events, if they were received properly. So let's go to Google Analytics, then in the admin, go to debug view. And here I see video play. It contains the Vimeo data and also video pause. I have already created a video percent custom dimension in the previous example. Therefore, I don't need to do it again. So when it comes to the Vimeo setup, we are done. The last thing would be to publish your container changes and you can do that by clicking the submit button. And now as promised, here are my three power tips related to video tracking with Google Analytics 4. So if you are tracking YouTube video interactions with Google Tag Manager trigger, and it still doesn't work for some reason, then try editing the trigger and switch from DOM ready right here to window loaded. It might help. Another option that you can try could be to go to templates. And again, this applies if you're using Google Tag Manager solution. So in the templates section, in the tag templates, click search gallery, and then click the search icon, enter iframe. And this is the tag template that you want to try. Click the template, add to workspace and add. Once the template is added, go to tags, click new tag configuration, then select this YouTube iframe API loader template and fire this tag on all pages. So save this tag, then refresh the preview mode and see if the YouTube video tracking starts working. Very often the solution helps. And even if this solution doesn't work, then I will post one more resource below the video where I explain other reasons why your YouTube trigger might not be working in Google Tag Manager. There are many tips here, but it means that it's a very high chance that it will help you solve the issue. And that is how you can track embedded video players with Google Analytics 4 and Google Tag Manager. If you found this video useful, hit the like button below the video. That will help me understand what videos do you like and what should I create in the future. Also, if you want to learn more about Google Tag Manager or GA4, then subscribe to this channel. My name is Julius, this is Analytics Mania, and I'll see you in the next video.